In this video, I will show you how you can use your materials, models, assets, or other data in another Blender file. Now for many of you, this might seem very obvious, but I've actually gotten quite a few questions about this in the comments of my videos, especially my procedural material tutorials. And people are wondering if they have to recreate the entire procedural material every time they want to use the material in that project. But that's totally not the case. You can take any materials, models, assets, or really any data from one Blender file and use it in a different Blender file. And I'm going to show you three methods on how to do that. So the first method is to just copy and paste objects from one Blender file to the other Blender file. So right over here, I have my procedural snowy ground material. Links in the description if you'd like to watch that tutorial. And what I can do is just select the sphere object here because this object has the material applied to it. Then I can press Control C to copy the object. And then right over here I have another blender file opened up, a second one, and this one just has this basic landscape. And I can press Control V to paste the object and the object has been added into this other Blender file. And you can see because the material was on this object, the procedural snowy ground, it's now in this Blender file. So then I could just click on this object here and I could click here on the materials and just add the procedural snowy ground. And now that material is on the ground in my other Blender file. Now the second way to do this is to use Blender's append feature. So in your Blender file, you can click here on file and then you can click on append. And when you do this, Blender's file browser will appear, and you can just locate to wherever the blend file is where you have the data. So here's my procedural snowy ground Blender file. I'm just going to go inside this, so double click on it, and you can see it's going to show you some folders with all of the data in the Blender file. So if you wanted to add an object, you could go in here and add an object. Uh, if you wanted to add a material, there's a material folder, and you could select the material. But there's also a lot of other data, like the lights. You could add any lights. Also, if you want to add a collection from one Blender file to another Blender file, you could add any collections here and there's also mesh data and brush data camera and there's even scenes you can even add in scenes from one blender file to another and there's also world data as well so in this case i'm going to go to material and then i'm going to select the procedural snowy ground and then i can just select the object and click on the drop down and here's the other procedural snowy ground that i've just added in so now we have that material in this other blender file but if you're constantly using let's say a material or an object or something like that then the best way to do this is to use Blender's asset browser. So what I'm going to do is click right up here in the corner when the crosshair appears and I can click and drag over and this is going to split the window. Then if you click right here on the editor type you can change this to the asset browser. And then if I click right here on current file here are all of the assets that I've added to my asset browser. And you can see right here I have like 3D models. I also have low poly nature, some low poly nature models that I've added and also procedural materials. So if you're familiar with my channel then you know that I create a lot of procedural material tutorials and so I've added all of my procedural materials to the asset browser. So if I wanted to add that procedural snowy ground material I could go right up here to the search, I could type in snow and there's the procedural snowy ground. I can just click on it and drag it and drop it in. Now if you want to set up Blender's asset browser then I have a complete tutorial on how to use Blender's asset browser. You can check out that tutorial with the link in the description. And if you'd like to purchase my Blender procedural materials then you can check out my Blender procedural material packs with the links in the description and purchase on my Gumroad store. And if you'd like to learn how to create any of my Blender procedural materials, you can also check out my Blender procedural material tutorial playlist here on YouTube. So I hope this tutorial was helpful and thank you for watching.